is part two of a conversation I had on May 27th with my friends about acceptance in the Netherlands. This time, the main topic of discussion was language barriers, how they kind of affect the feeling of acceptance, and also how to better integrate so that you can feel more accepted. If you haven't seen part one, you can check it out here. I highly suggest watching that first just so that you can get to know my friends a little bit better. Some of them you will recognize though. I do notice that sometimes other Dutch don't think of me as Dutch because of how I look. And so do you think that has something to do with being less accepting of like foreigners? Or is it just that they don't see that Dutch people can look lots of different ways? I don't know. I I think like I've also spent like most of my uh, adult life in academia, and uh, if you go up sort of further on the uh, social ladder, I guess mm -hmm. in society, it it gets a bit more homogeneous. And also, uh, like I still live in Amsterdam, but I work now outside of the urbanized Randstad area of the Netherlands. So I've noticed that people are like, "Ah, oh, how should I talk to this person?" And it's like, <laughs> but I, I felt like I also spent some time at the University of Amsterdam that it was a bit more um, international. Like, also they were, I guess, maybe because they're a bigger, univer bigger university, they were able to attract more international researchers and things like this. So I stand a bit more out, more. Uh, in my current group. Do you feel like an outsider in your current group? Maybe not. Like I have a small like computational group that I'm in. It's like five or six people and then we're in a larger department. Um, in a larger department sometimes. Also like people are less interacting with the few actual internationals that don't speak Dutch in the department as well. Like I've had a lot of conversations with them where it's like yeah there was this big thing going on in my research group and it's all the other Dutch people would talk about it in Dutch and like no idea what was going on or like being at a bar and I remember like one French colleague who like multiple times like could you guys please speak in English I can't understand and then people will say one thing to her but if they would tell something to a Dutch person they would very easily switch to Dutch. Ah uh, okay so just a lack of some of the ways to include people. Yeah, and I, I don't know if it's like active exclusion or if people are like uncertain about how they should speak in English or interact with internationals or I, I don't know. It's just, but it's definitely that they're not used to it as much. I think so as a Chinese, I can very much relate it to what Shabazz just mentioned. I think it's um, very much the thing I, I am experiencing for for years that if you are with a group of Dutch people, especially colleagues, it's very often they just switch to their own language. And I, I don't feel it's personal or something, but if you're the only non-Dutch people uh, there and you feel very much excluded from their conversation, that's not a nice feeling. But I also understand sometimes if you are Dutch and you are like enjoying the conversation with um, people close to you, you probably also are not aware of what is going on for the, 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 the last person who does not understand you. So I'm not sure, maybe it's just because they're not careful. I cannot say it's because they are not accepting or they are excluding me. It's just, we both need to um, get used to it. They need to get used to me being present. I need to get used to the, uh, them forgetting I'm there. For me, I feel it's more like experience and mindset. Um, I noticed that if, like, if I'm with a group of Dutch people, if someone native Dutch but has experience with um, foreigners like Shabazz or like some other um, colleagues or who has like um, who's half Indonesian, half Dutch, something like that, this type of person will always be the first to notice that they are using a language I don't understand and they will uh, she or this person will guide people to switch. So I think it's more like you um, learn something from your own experience and you understand what um, a foreigner would feel in this type of situation, then you could change your behavior or something. I get that, but 
you, they are native Dutch, though. I mean, Shabazz is native Dutch. So the idea that he knows what it's like to be a foreigner here would almost make me think then that maybe they're not super accepting. Well, I can extrapolate on the language barrier thing. For instance, I'm originally from uh, Limburg, so the, the southern part of the Netherlands. And uh, the further south you go, the thicker the accent. Because I only uh, speak uh, Dutch, the Limburgish is a bit foreign to me. And uh, when, uh, for instance, colleagues uh, spoke uh, Limburgish with each other, and I'm in the conversation, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't follow, then they will switch uh, to, uh, to Dutch proper. But um, when I join in the conversation and they don't notice that I can't uh, speak Limburgish, then they will continue and yeah, forget them there that I can't conversate with them. When you don't speak Dutch and Dutch people are speaking Dutch uh, amongst each other, then yeah, it's a bit harder to get noticed if, yeah, if they don't uh, get to um, interact with you in you know, English in that case. I, I totally agree with you. I, like I said, for me, it's difficult to um, tell the difference if it's just because of this is just pure language barrier or um, I can make a conclusion that Dutch people is less accepting than other nationalities or something like that. I guess it's habits, but um, yeah, I've not been uh, too much abroad to, to notice that um, that is a problem for, um, yeah, for other countries or other peoples. I mostly uh, get together with people that uh, can speak multiple languages. So when I'm in Germany and they speak German and they notice uh, I'm a bit falling behind, but when I am interacting with them, then they'll probably switch over to English, uh, perhaps, or encourage me to speak more German. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I then you are interacting instead of them noticing that, uh, yeah, you can't join in the conversation because you can't join in with the language. I guess it's more the, of, uh, of a habit to conversate in your own language than... Um, actively ignoring people that uh, that can't speak the language so yeah you are accepting yeah. them but you have to notice and that is a um something you have to learn i guess i don't know at the academic level and the level of english in the netherlands i just i find it so odd that people would say there's a language barrier i mean i've talked with like my uh like dutch direct colleagues and he, like he speaks perfect english but he feels like he's like unable to like casually talk in english like he can write a scientific paper uh about some medical topic but he doesn't feel like he can do small talk which is in his head i think but maybe some people also are insecure from that side like socially interacting in the language this particular colleagues he, colleague he finds intimidating i guess like he was telling me like, oh, I want to take like some extra language courses at the university that they offer because he feels insecure about that. And I know he like, it's, he's good enough that he could do casual small talk. It's just sort of feels uncomfortable doing it. Yeah, I've, I've worked as a uh, climbing instructor for nine years. And um, about 30% of all our guests uh, were foreigners. And uh, all my college, uh, colleagues uh, could um, at least do Dutch and English. Uh, German would be a little uh, problematic, but still they did their exams in German. But yeah, having a conversation was the worst. They perhaps could do their instructions in German. They couldn't pick up on their own flaws, for instance, but just speaking the sentences they, were, uh, they learned by heart. But then again, they try to avoid uh, uh, doing those instructions because when um, the guests were having questions, for instance, they don't know how to respond. So therefore, yeah, language is a barrier when you only use it, for instance, academically instead of just socially. But you can accept someone and still have a language barrier. I think there's a, there's a personal side to it as well. Because my, my family, my in-laws, my family-in-law are all Pakistani. And when, when they are together, 
or for that set of party. I'm the only Dutch guy there. I'm the only, how do you say that, white guy there. Yeah. And I, ne- I never feel excluded. And they, for 90%, are talking Urdu, the, the, yeah. the Pakistani language. But still, I don't feel excluded, you know? So exactly. I think that's also how you how you interpret that. I'm just sitting there and I try to, I, I can speak Urdu for, uh, uh, I want to say uh, for shit, but I, I, I don't understand Urdu, so I'm there. And uh, sometimes there's an English word between. Okay, w- when I hear my name, my uh, <laughs> my name, then then you got my attention, right? So, and then yeah. I'm, well, they're talking at me. And then you can think, oh, okay, what, what are they talking about? But mm. maybe 99% of the time, I, I'm just sitting there and I don't feel excluded or anything. So again, I think there's also maybe if you're insure or unsecure or, you know, you can easily feel left out, right? Funny, yeah. I've, like, I've, I have like the same, with the exact same language experience because I also don't speak Urdu even though my father is from Pakistan. <laughs> and there's like a big generation shift. So if I'm like with my, uh, like his generation, my aunts and my uncles, they all speak uh, Dutch, maybe with an accent, but they all speak Dutch fine. But if they're with each other, they will only speak in Urdu. And then if I'm with my cousins, like my generation, they will only speak Dutch. Also with yeah, me, true. but also with each other. But you still can feel very accepted and included with a language barrier. So that that's yeah. what I guess I'm saying. It can't all be that way. It can't be that the language is making it feel like you're not accepted because you can feel accepted whether or not you can understand what people are saying. It's because of their body language still, or their givingness, or their willingness, or their their them extending, you know, their their friendship towards you, or just wanting to share their culture with you, even if they're not friends with you, but just wanting to also make you feel more comfortable, because that it is difficult when you move somewhere to even just learn the culture and sometimes you don't get very good directions either on how to find this information or that information so it makes you feel very much outside of society because you're like i don't even know how to get in because people aren't really helping me to penetrate this wall you know and break it down into manageable pieces you you described like experience in korea where there were people that made like an active effort to include you into parts of their life outside of like maybe work, but like more of the personal. Yeah. So I think that would probably be very important for people to feel accepted. I have a question for native Dutchess. If you meet like a foreigner like me, who just comes to the Netherlands and have no idea about the language, have no idea about the culture, and what kind of advice would you give to, to me in order to, either for me to penetrate this barrier of culture hang around the dutch <laughs> just hang around <laughs> them and and don't make too many assumptions like oh they don't like me or they it's difficult or they or they don't want to speak english just because of me because i joined them no don't do that i think they're very open-minded but there's, there's, i think the best way to learn is, is just hang around the dutch see where they hang around or find places where you can easily infiltrate where they're already open-minded if you if you for instance go to your your neighbor just ring his bell and say hi i'm from uh, china could you help me i'm thinking maybe they think like what but if you go to places or clubs or yeah how do you say that um the, the, maybe the first step is um how do you say these where, where you learn the dutch language you're all together in the same how do you say that schuitje we say in dutch yeah. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Dutch, like a Dutch course or so. There are the people have the same problem maybe, and they're all trying to interact, and then go to places where a lot of Dutch are. I think that's the best way. So your um, your suggestion is to learn Dutch by hanging out with that. So learning the language is essential here. Yeah, but some, yeah, to communicate with them. Yeah, but sometimes, like, mm, I also have friends. They just come here for. They know it's like a short period of time. It's not going to be like for 10 years or something. It's just three or four years. We did our PhD um, after we finish a PhD or you did your study and then you're gone. If you spend time learning the language, it's 
it would be nice. I totally agree with you. But then you like it takes time to do that. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, but I, I think the, the most important thing is you have to go out there, and and don't be afraid. Because I think a lot of things is is, is like uh, oh I'm assume I'm assuming this is the case or I'm assuming they don't like me. Oh, and isn't that a uh, isn't that a really an Asian thing? Please correct me if I'm wrong. But isn't that an Asian? Oh, I don't want want to bother other people with my. I don't want them to do any effort I, for me. You know, I, I don't want to bother them. I think you pointed it. I think you totally pointed out. It's like it, it's kind of like Asian thing, or it's also more me and being Asian. Like you don't want to be the trouble here. You really don't yeah. want to be the trouble in a group. And if you sense that you, because we have this, uh, like eclectism thing, you you want to be welcomed in a group. If you feel, um, I'm actually the trouble here, and then you are excluding yourself already. Did you ever felt not accepted or not welcome in a group? No one said that to my face, <laughs> of course. Ah, that's... but it's more that like some small things may make me think maybe i'm making trouble here maybe i'm making people making people feel a bit uncomfortable or or i sometimes just feel awkward i don't know what to do everyone is speaking dutch what should i do what should yeah. she do to sebastian <laughs> if everybody speaks yeah wow <laughs> Wait, well, i mean well. so like my, my french colleague she literally was just like started shouting at people like please don't speak dutch which you need to have a certain personality type, I guess, for that to work. Mm -hmm. And then it still didn't work completely, but it worked a little bit. And I remember like at a different occasion, I was talking to one of my Dutch colleagues and she was like, we really should start just speaking English. Like she's like really being bothered by this. And so people, like there are some Dutch at least that will notice. I think if somebody's being maybe not willfully excluded but like through carelessness is being excluded basically so i think like for my first two years um what i did was to wait for people someone um would notice that i was listening or i i was there but then after um some time i um i learned this myself if i so it's also my asian way it's really a cultural thing um, I don't feel comfortable to speak out. Oh, please switch back to English. I would just um, pretend I'm still listening. Whatever they are talking about, I would be looking at people, like waiting for con eye contact. And at some point, someone would notice me and they would switch back. That's what I'm trying to do now. I think it's also because, like I said, even I do feel excluded when they when they do this, but I'm not assuming they're against me. I don't take this personal. It does not feel nice, but I don't think it's really against me or something. But I think what you're talking about, I also feel, and I'm not Asian. Like your experience, I th don't think is unique. Like I remember a um, good Italian friend of mine and she was like, yeah, they, nobody will talk to me unless they need something from me. Then they will ask in English and then otherwise they will speak in Dutch. She was pretty outgoing, I think, but still felt kind of excluded in this way. The Dutch like or accept uh, people more when they make an effort. And uh, that can depend on, uh, for instance, doing a, a language course or going to people, ask them questions, a joining conversation. They, they always will reward your positive intentions. That Standing around and hoping that someone will help you won't get you very far, sadly. But when you go to people, when uh, you make an effort, they will always help you. I totally agree with you. Like making some active efforts would help a lot in any circumstances. But I just realized maybe that is the cultural difference. Like for Dutch people, you appreciate someone else uh, from the other culture too actively approach to your culture like in in my culture where i'm from we have this responsibility to make the other culture feel at home i need to or other people need to realize we do need to shift this mindset while you are in the netherlands and you do appreciate the different things or you you don't take um something we think is granted for granted your story uh, reminded me of like the same italian friend and like another person and was very sort of isolated there and this other like fellow student of hers felt 
very sort of mistreated. And my Italian friend then shared a story where a Canadian girl felt mistreated for sharing this with a group in sort of their, their weekly class where they got together. And all the Dutch people were like, well, did you try this? Did you try this? Did you try asking them for this? And my Italian friend was so upset with all the Dutch people because she was like, why should you ask for this? This should be expected. She's being mistreated. Why don't they show her empathy or whatever? And so maybe this is like a very thick cultural difference. She felt like this should be implied. And if it's like not given without being asked for, that's like very upsetting for her. Maybe it doesn't get given very easily. Otherwise, like being not left out if you don't ask for it. Yulon, you're you're right. I feel like a lot of cultures are taught to embrace other cultures, try to make them feel comfortable. It's like you're inviting them into your home. Even like you do not have this emotional connection mm -hmm. at the beginning, but you still want to be like nice to people in a way that you are nice to someone you know from your childhood. I think that's that's what my culture taught me. But I. I think I understand more today after our conversation that the Dutch culture um, is not cold, not cold at all, but you appreciate someone to show this uh, initiative to approach your culture, then you will be nice and friendly to this someone. Perhaps it's not uh, approaching culture, but, but more uh, people in general. When people uh, approach me and uh, ask me questions, and perhaps their Dutch isn't that well, then I'll make an effort to, to help them uh, to go further. It's very effort-based here. Yes. Like, the culture here is very much, you go get it. And that can be very uncomfortable when there's so many cultures that are like, no, let me invite you into my culture. And so it's, it is kind of jolting when people aren't doing that. That comes back to expectations, what uh, Sebastian uh, said. That when you have certain expectations based on your own uh, culture or habits, that uh, other people will have them as well. And yeah, yeah that can be an eye-opener. I think it's so odd, though, that like Asian cultures, North American cultures, other European cultures, all have this normal urge to want to help foreigners but then you get to the netherlands and they're like earn it <laughs> you gotta reach out you got to make <laughs> that uncomfortable first step even though you're out of your norm and because it's really uncomfortable going to a brand new place right so it's hard to make that first step when you're already so uncomfortable you don't want to make things more uncomfortable, you know what I mean? Or you didn't know that's what people expect you to do. Yeah, exactly. And so you might feel rude walking up and asking and doing all of that. Yeah, personally, I'm, I'm wondering how far you can go when calling it a, a Dutch habit or a Northern European habit. Does the, the same not apply for Russia, Poland, Ireland? These are great questions. Like, what other cultures have this approach? Because, again, I'm mostly used to, like, North American mm -hmm. cultures and Asian cultures since those are the places I've lived. I've never lived in Germany or anything like that. But, obviously, if Shabazz had a friend in Italy and France and they were used to the more embracing kind of stuff with foreigners, helping them get situated, it must also be, you know, kind of cultural. Well, here's Tubby again. And he had a good time during the conversation, as you could tell. And as I already mentioned, it was a pretty good conversation. I would love to hear your thoughts on how language barriers might affect the way that people integrate or just how people can integrate into Dutch society a little bit easier. I know that a lot of foreigners really don't know how to penetrate a new culture. To where they can feel really comfortable and at home so the more suggestions ideas and tips that you can give the the better off i think me and many other people will be i'm going to be honest anything you put in the comments below i might use in a video in the future to again help others better navigate the dutch system when they first move here 
and I would appreciate that assistance so that I can do that because that is the point of my channel is to help people better understand the Netherlands and to integrate well and I always appreciate all the support you give me in the comments. So if you want to continue to support me and you watch regularly, please subscribe. And if you want to know when I post, ring the bell. It will update you when I do. But if you don't want to ring that bell, then just check out every Sunday and Wednesday. But sometimes I do post random videos on another day and you might miss those. But until next time, I hope you stay happy and healthy. Thank you so much for watching.